Hello, Young Math Padawans. It's Mrs. Angel with your lesson for today on an introduction to solving a two-step equation. Before we begin, let's do a quick review on how do we know which property of equality to use. Well, if the equation is a sum or a difference, meaning it has addition or subtraction, we're always going to use SPO or APO, subtraction or addition property of equality, to make a zero term. If the equation is a product or a quotient, meaning multiplying or dividing, we're going to use DPO or MPO, division or multiplication property of equality, to make a big one. As you can see in this first example, this equation is a sum because it has addition. By subtracting 4 from both sides using SPO, 4 minus 4 becomes a zero term, and we're left with x plus 0, or x by itself, and 8 minus 4 is 4. So when the equation has addition with a positive term, we're going to use SPO to make a zero term. As you can see in this equation, this is a difference. We are subtracting 4. And when you see subtraction or when you see something that is a negative term, we think of APO to make a zero term. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. x minus 0 gets x by itself. And 8 plus 4 is 12. So when you see subtraction or a negative term, we think APO. In this equation, there's multiplication happening. 4x is a product, 4 times x. To undo multiplication, we use division. Dividing by 4 creates a big 1 because 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 1x is x by itself. We end up with x equals 2 after dividing by 4 on both sides. So when you see multiplication, regardless of if it's positive or negative, we think depot. Finally, in this equation we had division, x divided by 4. To undo division, we're going to use multiplication. This puts a 4 in the numerator, and 4 divided by 4 is another big 1. 1x one gives you x by itself, and multiplying on the other side results in x equals 32. So when you see division in a term, we think mpo. In a basic two-step equation, you're now looking at an equation that has two terms on one side of the equal sign. Since it has two terms, that means to solve the equation, we're going to end up using two properties of equality. The first term I always want you to identify in solving a basic two-step equation is called the constant. The constant is the term that does not have a variable. It's the integer or the number on that side of the equation. So in this case, our constant is positive 5. The next term I want you to identify in a basic two-step equation is called the variable term. It's pretty simple. That's the one that has the variable. In this case, 2x is our variable term because it contains x. In the variable term, I also want you to look for what's called the coefficient. The coefficient is the number that is attached to the variable. So in short, this equation has two terms. Our constant is positive 5. Our variable term is 2x. And our coefficient is 2. Let's try identifying those parts in our second equation, x divided by 2 minus 5 equals 13. Our constant in this equation is minus 5, but we're thinking about that as a negative 5. It's the term without the variable. The variable term in this case is x divided by 2 because that's the term that has the variable x. And finally, the coefficient in this case is still 2 because it's attached to the variable, the difference is this 2 is in the denominator, hence showing division. If you can identify these parts of a two-step equation, solving becomes very simple. So now let's get into how to actually solve a basic two-step equation. There are two steps to solving the equation, and then the third step is to check our work. Before I begin, I always put a line down the middle of my equal sign so that I can separate one side of the equation from the other. The variable in this case is on the left side of the equation. That's where I'll be looking. Step one, I'm going to identify the constant in the equation. Looking at the left side of the equation, I see my constant is positive 5. That's the term without the variable. My goal here is to make a zero term out of that constant with APO or SPO. How would you create zero out of plus 5? We would use SPO because by subtracting 5 from 5, we create a zero term. So if I go in here and subtract 5 from 5, SPO says I have to subtract it from the other side as well. What are we left with in our equation? 
that becomes zero, five minus five, so we're left with two x on the left because we have the zero, we don't need to include that anymore. And 13 minus five is eight. Notice here, x is not by itself, but the variable term, 2x, is now by itself. So we can move on to step two. Step two is to identify the coefficient. Remember, that's the number attached to the variable, which in this case would be the number two, and make a big one using MPO or DPO. Well, let's think for a moment. If I'm already multiplying by two, I wouldn't want to multiply again. So I'm going to use DPO to create a big one. And so I will divide by two on both sides. That creates a big one because two divided by two is one and one X is simply X. Eight divided by two is four. And now through the process of using two properties of quality, I have X by itself and I think that might be the solution. Of course, we always have to go to step three, check. To check my work, I'm taking my original equation, two times x plus five equals 13, but I'm replacing x with my solution four. And I have to figure out if this equation is true, because if it's not true, we made a mistake. So two times four, that's eight plus five equals 13, and eight plus five, that's 13, meaning if 13 equals 13, the solution to this equation is x equals four. And we've just solved a two-step equation. Now we're gonna do those same steps with a different basic two-step equation. I'm gonna start the same way by putting a line down the middle of the equal sign. And I'm only looking at the side of the equation with the variable, which in this case is the left side. Step one, identify the constant, okay? The constant here is a minus five, so I'm thinking that's like a negative five. And my goal is to make a zero term using APO or SPO. Well, if it's a negative five, I have to use APO to create that zero term. So let's go ahead and do just that. Add five to both sides. And after I simplify, let's see. Negative five plus five is a zero term, meaning I'm left with x divided by two on the left side. 13 plus five is 18. So now one term has been eliminated. I'm left with only my variable term left. Step two, identify the coefficient. That's the part that's attached to x. In this case, my coefficient is that I'm dividing by two and make a big one using MPO or DPO. Well, if I'm already dividing, I wouldn't divide again. So we're going to use MPO here to create our big one. Multiply both sides. Remember, multiplication happens in the numerator. 2x over 2, well, that makes a big one. And 1x leaves us with x by itself is 36. And now x is totally isolated, meaning we can move on to step three, checking our solution in the original equation. So to check, I'm taking my original equation, but I'm replacing x with 36. 36 divided by two minus five equals 13. I have to see if this equation is true. 36 divided by two, that's 18. Hmm, does 18 minus five equal 13? Yes and 13 equals 13 is a true equation, which means the solution to this equation is 36. Now let's move on to some other examples for you to try. Example number one, four plus x divided by five equals zero. Follow the same steps as the other examples and try to solve this equation on your own now. The first step was to make a line down the middle of the equal sign, and we were only looking at the left side of the equation because that's where x is. So first I identified four as our constant and used SPO to make a zero term. Four minus four is zero. That left me with the equation x divided by five equals negative four. Step two is to identify our coefficient, which in this case was dividing by five. 
That led me to use MPO, multiply both sides by five to create my big one, and X equals negative 20. Of course, we still need to check to make sure that that is a solution. Well, since negative 20 divided by five is negative four, and four plus negative four is zero, we can confidently say that the solution to this equation is X equals negative 20. Time for you to try another example. Be careful here. The first thing that I notice is our variable is now on the other side of the equation. So we don't care about 42. We're only looking at the negative three and the negative nine R. Try to solve this equation on your own now. First, I put a line down the middle of my equal sign and focus all my attention on that right side with the variable. The constant here, the term without the variable was negative three, which led me to know that I have to use APO to create that zero term. That leaves me with negative nine R, because if you look carefully at this term, that is a negative term. So you have to make sure to bring down that negative with it. That's a very common mistake. The coefficient here was negative nine. And since I'm multiplying, I wouldn't multiply again. I knew to use depo and divide by negative nine, since negative nine divided by negative nine is a big one, and one r is by itself, 45 divided by negative nine is negative five. Of course, we still have to check. Let's see how our check worked out. So I substituted negative five for r in the original equation. Nine times negative five is negative 45. I brought down my negative three and minus, and I notice when you're subtracting a negative, that's the same as adding. And negative three plus 45 is 42. That means since this is a true equation, the solution is negative five. So to briefly summarize, to solve a basic two-step equation that has two terms, your first step is to identify the constant and make a zero term with APO or SPO. Step two is to identify the coefficient and make a big one using MPO or DPO. Once you have fully isolated X, check your solution to make sure that it's true. That's it for today's lesson. I will see you next time.